What the heck is going on everybody? Welcome back to Form Check Friday. This is the series where we take your viewer submitted videos. You email them to us at formcheckfriday at gmail.com and no other email address. And uh, we spin the old roulette wheel and um, use a random number generator to grab some of these emails, videos, and um, put them up on the screen behind me. I do my best to try to help make everybody more educated and more efficient lifters. Thing with Form Check Friday is, and let me just say this before we start, none of these suggestions are law. None of these suggestions are necessarily going to give you the biggest boost and fix absolutely everything, but what it is going to do is it's gonna make you more aware of different aspects of your technique that you can explore and experiment with to enhance your own personal journey towards your individual technique. Anyways, that is enough of that rant, so let's get rolling. First off, uh, we got a video from Guillerme. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right. I apologize if I've butchered it. I've butchered many a name on Form Check Friday if you've been around for a while. Anyways, uh, he's been following the channel for a while and really appreciate our, uh, my, maybe my, our knowledge, humility, and information we provide. Oh, thank you very much. Um, here's my conventional deadlift for a set of five at 120. My grip is very something. Uh, let the bar slip on my third. Hopefully this video makes it to FCF. Well, here you are, Guillerme. Guillerme, Guillerme, uh, I'm not sure. All right, uh, let's get my head out of the way. Cool, so let's see what we're working with here. He's doing uh, some conventional deadlifts, a little bit of a grip issue, he said, and uh, let's let's pick this apart a little bit. So first off, pretty damn good starting position, actually. Uh, you're doing a, a relatively good job of pulling the slack out of the bar. Let's back this up for a sec, though. Here, so really good position, and then Right before you pull, you take and like tuck your hips underneath and the knees pop forward and those things put you in a worse position. See this? Not as good a position as this. So I'd like for you to work on trying to keep those knees back, trying to keep those hips back and maintain this just little bit of extension here because what's happening uh, is when you pull yourself in like that, we're gonna round out this low back and we're gonna end up having a bit of a harder time locking the bar out at the top. Looks pretty smooth there. Obviously this isn't uh, crazy weight for you, but you can also see as the uh, pull starts, where everything's shifting back onto the heels. So that tells me that we're probably starting a little bit too far on the toes when we start the lift. Sorry, a little bit too far on the toes when we start the lift. And if we watch, everybody watch right here as we initiate this lift. So right here, we're on the heels. We shift, toes come down, we start on the toes, and then we shift back onto the heels and the toes even come up a little bit towards the end. So when you do all of that shifting, I want you to, again, just stay back, 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 back ye. Things look pretty good though. The mechanics of the lift, once you've got it going, uh, are really solid. So you're doing a good job of kind of pushing the floor away, saving that hip extension for closer to the top once the bar gets to or just above the knee joint. That was actually a really good rep right there. So here, we kind of stayed in that hips higher position. We didn't get as much shifting in the knees, but I think that's still the thing that I would try to work on. One more time, just for clarification's sake. Uh, let me pause this. So you pull in, this is a really good position here, and then you sit too far down, too far down. Stay back, try to create some tension in the glutes, hamstrings, quads, you should be really feeling it before you start to pull, and then go from there, my man. Hopefully that helps. Our next one comes from Oscar Erickson. And when I saw this name, I was wondering if it was the same Oscar uh, who I met when uh, him and his, I believe, wife now, fiance? Annika, we're here for Worlds. Um, so let's see, let's see if this is the same Oscar or if I uh, just need to get out and meet more people named Oscar. All right, I don't think it's the same Oscar. Anyways, 
that part is unimportant. What is important is uh, he's also from Sweden. So that, I mean, that also lent itself to me thinking. Anyways, uh, says, uh, he loves our content and wishes to compete one day. Um, his squad, this is, is about 80% of his one rep max in a set of three. He's been trying to train by the RPE system, but for my squad, it always feels heavy as shit while it looks like I got plenty of gas left in the tank. I also use a wide grip, but still get pain in the wrists, maybe due to poor mobility. So um, let's let's start there. Let's start with the wrist because I, I do see um, a couple of things that we might be able to clean up that can alleviate potentially some of that stress on the wrist. So if we look at the wrist here, we notice that it's pretty cocked and the elbows are really kind of tucked forward almost underneath. One thing that I would try if you're if you're having wrist issues, I would I would play with um, potentially going from a thumb around the bar grip to a thumb behind the bar grip and then straightening those wrists out. That's one thing that for me has always helped me get tighter, helped me feel tighter, uh, helped me use my back. I feel a little bit better. Uh, it maintained a better position and better tightness. Now, if the bar is feeling really heavy, maybe creating some more tightness, getting a little bit more, uh, how do you say, uh, just a little bit tighter. Getting a little bit tighter um, can oftentimes make that bar during the unrack feel a lot lighter. So if you can get tighter, it feels lighter. There you go, Bryce Crotcher. Um, now let's take a look into the squat. So pretty solid solid walkout here. I like the uh, back position, everything looks pretty good there. We're staying real tight. Um, you know, knees are staying forward to the bottom. We're not shooting the hips back. Maybe it looks like we're a little on the line depth wise. So I'd maybe work on trying to sit just a bit deeper, but I think in terms of uh, in terms of the wrist, that's one thing that I would play with. And we can see it's very, very subtle. Let's see if I can see it again. If we watch right in here, as he stands up, his wrist just pushes further in under the bar, and the hand opens just a tiny bit and then closes at the top. So as you descend, we're clearly like putting a lot of stretch into the wrists and that might be causing some of the annoyances and aggravations. So um, yeah, let's work on playing with that grip. I think that might help you tighten your back up, might help the weights feel a little bit lighter. The squat itself looks really good. Let's just work on that depth. Boom. All right, who's next? Uh, who's next is Rofini. So Rofini is a somewhat new power lifter from Brunei, a small country on the island of Borneo. Wow, cool. That's really awesome. People on the island of Borneo are watching Calgary Barbell. Who would have thunk it? Anyways, thank you for your submission. March, April, 2018, uh, she started powerlifting and uh, has participated in two powerlifting comps. Awesome, aiming to compete in a third next year around March. Uh, here's a video of her top single, top triple of 130 kilos. Damn, that's a good squat. Uh, at what was supposed to be an RP8, but I think it turned out to be a nine instead. May have overshot, but let me know what you think. I tend to have a lot of problems with my hips shooting up a bit too early and an issue with depth. All right, Rafini, let's see. 130 for a triple, that's a great squat. Very strong. All right. You know, watch this through. I think I have some ideas on what we might be able to do. Got guts. That last one looked tough. She's gonna go for this one anyways. And it actually looked a little bit smoother. All right. So the, the first big thing that I noticed is the descent. Um, I, I think we're breaking pretty knees first. Uh, and I think um, we did a video recently, I think it was titled Stop Squatting So Upright. Uh, Dylan, Dylan, put the video up over, over here somewhere. Anyways, stop squatting uh, too upright. And I think what's happening here is you're not setting your torso angle. So watch what happens when we get into the bottom position here. We're trying to stay super, super upright. And right before depth, if we watch her hips right here, she's gonna kick back and kind of like change orientation into and out of the bottom. Let's watch this right here. Yeah, 
So she goes from like a more upright torso angle to a less upright torso angle. And I think Rafini, if you set that little bit of lean to start off with, squat a little more hips back, um, I think that's gonna allow you to keep your torso angle a little bit more consistent into and out of the bottom as well. Another thing I would investigate or play with uh, is playing with your squat stance. So a lot of times when we get this sort of hips shooting back, we also see the knees kind of uh, come in. It's called valgus. So we get a little bit of knee valgus. Now, that's not an inherently problematic thing, but perhaps if we move the stance in a little bit, we eliminate some of the demand on the hips to try to keep those knees out where we set them. We allow things to align a little more naturally. Instead of cueing the knees out so much, we allow them to track a little more straight forward. And in a lot of cases that can be not only more comfortable, but easier for people to hit depth. So check out that video um, about setting your hip angle. Let's play with the stance width, perhaps bring it in a little bit, play with that at least and see what it feels like. Um, upper back position, the mechanics of the squat, things look pretty good. Um, so those would be my recommendations. Try that out. Hopefully that helps you and good luck on uh, your meet in March. Very cool, very cool. Who do we got next here? Ruby. Ruby Da Silva. All right, so Ruby is currently doing strong lifts five by fives. Uh, he's stuck on 70 kilos bench press at 71 kilos. Managed 72 for all sets and reps, but it didn't feel good and technique was worse, so I scaled down to 70. But still struggling, been stuck at this weight for a couple of weeks now. Thank you, I appreciate you offering this to your viewers. You're very welcome, Ruby. Let us look at this. All right. Let's see here, Ruby. First off, that's a hell of a narrow grip, my man. Right here, close grip benching. That's gonna be the first thing I recommend you try out is a more narrow grip. Also, it just looks like we're really new to bench press, like uh, kind of just a, a bit of a novice. Um, one big thing I recommend is whatever you do, don't get discouraged. Keep working, keep trying, keep experimenting, keep playing with your technique. Um, things are just shaky. Things are uh, a bit unfamiliar and that's okay. So let's, let's dive into some, some sort of main cues that I think are gonna help you get a little bit further with your bench press. To start with, um, the, the setup looks pretty good. I like that you're using your legs. You got a little bit of an arch, but the big thing that happens here is when we unrack, those shoulders really kind of pop forward. So right here, even before we breathe, you see the shoulders raise a little bit. We want to be trying to keep those shoulders pinned down as far and as hard as we can. So really work on that. As well, when you go to unrack, keep those shoulders down. Okay, there you go, okay. So you got them tighter there. We see the difference here between this and this position. So that's good. That's, uh, that's exactly what I was recommending to do. So we set the feet down. And now as you unrack, what happens is the shoulders right there, we shrug up and they come really far forward. So that's also probably a symptom of not having uh, like the greatest equipment, right? Cause you can see just how high up that bar is when he has to go to unrack it, right? He's not clearing the rack by a whole bunch. Um, so probably get somebody to try to hand off for you. That's the reason that we do that. Uh, a lot of power lifters will have somebody hand off their bench presses for them. It'll allow you to take a wider grip and keep that back tighter as you unrack. We wanna keep the back tight, try to unrack with the triceps. Think about just using your elbows to pop it out, bring the bar out. Right now, we're using the shoulders and the shoulders are moving quite a bit. We wanna to try to keep those shoulders as unmoving and tight as possible before we start the bench press. Next, the thing that we do out of the rack is we go straight into the bench. So you're unracking and then just going straight into the bench. Unrack, hold it tight, and as you bring that bar out, try to bring the shoulder blades down more and pull that chest up. So that way you can try to um, just get a little bit tighter through your back as you unrack. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the bar to come out this way and for the shoulders to come down with it. And that should help you produce a lot more tightness before you start your rep. As well with the, the lockout here, we want that to be similar to the unrack. We want the lockout to just be elbows and not allowing the shoulders to travel forward, right? We wanna maintain that tightness from before the unrack 
to after we put it back in the rack. That, that upper back tightness is so, so key. The touch point is a, a little bit inconsistent. The, the tuck and flare of the elbows actually looks pretty okay. Um, but again, we're really, really wobbly and really unstable. And I think that's largely due to the upper back. So number one thing I want you to work on is tightening that upper back. And let's also work on trying to plant the feet and use the feet and the quads and the legs to push yourself up the bench this way. If we watch, we're getting a lot of struggle, a lot of shifting, a lot of moving down here through the legs. See how we're kind of moving fit foot position here. The knees are caving in, the feet are coming up and sliding around. Shifted out there on the eccentric and then again shifting on the way back up. So really just try to think about tightening your bench press up. Try to think about making everything tighter. The only thing we want to be moving is like this joint and this joint. Literally everything else we want just like jammed in, wedged in, tight, tight, tight as possible. So yeah, hopefully that gives you a couple things to think about. And um, yeah, best of luck with it, Ruby. I think that uh, it's cool to see people that are sort of just embarking on this, this journey of learning lifting and, and sort of cultivating strength for the first time. And I just think that's great. So stick with it um, and just, just keep working away, man. I think you're doing very good. All right. Our last one here comes from Amit. Uh, Amit, Amit, Amit. Anyways, uh, Amit is a novice lifter interested in getting stronger. Perfect, you've come to the right place then, my man. Uh, he has been actively following our uploads on YouTube and has found them extremely helpful. He's attached his deadlift along with this email. Please have a look and is using Sumo a better option for me. Okay, interesting. First off, as a novice lifter, I would always recommend trying both conventional and Sumo to see if one of the two is more comfortable. If you're sort of um, initially able to lift more weight one way versus another can be a really good thing to experiment with. The big thing here, um, and I can see this out of the corner of my eye, uh, we're just, we're sitting too far down, my man. Let's, let's allow these hips back up. Let's bring these knees back a little bit because watch what happens. I'll show you where you want to start your deadlift from. That's your start position. See the difference between this and that? So I, I like this. I like that you're trying to get a nice neutral back position. You're trying to get your torso relatively upright, upright and use a little bit of that knee extension, torque the quads to get the bar moving. These are all very good things in, um, in theory, but I think we're kind of overdoing that cue of pulling yourself in, right? What we want is we want to be more like here. So I want you to think about pulling yourself into this position and maybe even just take a quick screenshot. This is going to have us a little bit more on our heels. Our knees are gonna be a little bit further back. Your butt's gonna be a little bit further back. And this is gonna allow you to pull into a position and initiate the lift. There's a lot of body movement between here and there's where the bar comes off the floor. So right about where I'm saying the start position should be is where the bar comes off the floor. We don't wanna to have a too much movement in the body before the bar moves. We want things to kind of move at the same time. Um, yeah. So the eccentric, right where you set it down, is great. But then you kind of sit lower and lower. So where do we get? Right about there. That's a really good position. And then as the bar gets to the floor, you're kind of sitting down, knees are coming forward, chest is going up a lot. And then again, sitting down too much. By the time we start, we get into a good position about here. And then the rest of the deadlift looks really good. So I think it's less an issue of the mechanics. You seem like a very proficient deadlifter, honestly. Um, it's just a, a bit of an exaggerated start position is all. It also looks like as you come through here, you're right about here. You're really trying to like reach with your back. You're trying to, um, trying. You, it, it looks like you're prioritizing extension here in your, in your low back. And what I want you to think about is prioritizing extension in your hips. I want you to think about squeezing your butt. Squeeze those butt muscles and lock the deadlift out by just <clears throat> squeezing your butt. Use those glutes. And let's try to finish the lift like that as opposed to trying to just pull the chest up. As Soon as the bar comes past the knees, start thinking about squeezing those glutes and keeping the lats really, really tight in your back. 
Also the changing of your gaze. See how we're looking down at the top like that? I would try to keep the head pretty much looking where you're looking. I like that. So that gaze, we're right about there. Now as we get to the top, you come and you're looking down, you're getting right over the bar. Keep looking there. Keep that head looking there. And that's just gonna help you keep your head a little bit more in line with your body, which should allow you to kind of finish, follow through, uh, and perhaps be a little bit more, a little bit more of a showman. And I don't mean that in like a show off to your friends, but like a, if you choose to compete, it's going to look more locked out. If you kind of pull the head through and everything in line comes through. Um, that's just kind of always where my head goes with these things, right? Like as a competitive power lifter, that's the, that's the lens I'm looking at these things through. Um, so. Yeah, I've rambled a little bit. I think I've uh, hopefully made some valid points and some sense. So yeah, I hope that helps you a bit. All right, that is gonna be it for today's Form Check Friday. So I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. Hope everybody gets some good lifts in, maybe even hit some PRs, but train responsibly. Hit those RPs and be honest with yourself. All right. At that, I'm gonna shut it down. So thank you very much for tuning in. If you'd like to submit and be featured on Form Check Friday or submit for your chance to be featured on Form Check Friday, you can go ahead and send those emails to formcheckfriday at gmail.com. Make sure, like I said, to check out that video on squatting to upright. I think that offers some suggestions. Uh, along the vein of some of, this, uh, some of the points that I made in this video, so it's a worthwhile watch. Go ahead and check that out. And we will see everybody next week for Form Check Friday and the live stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash calorie barbell, 12 p.m. MST. Bye. See you guys in the next one.